Supercharged, a podcast focusing on renewable energy and the passion behind the movement. Supercharged is a thoughtful journey through renewable energy sustainability and an integrated lifestyle. Subscribe and listen each week as we chat with thought leaders, influencers, and those who simply choose to live a better way. And hopefully along the way, you too will be inspired to live supercharged. This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Supercharged, and I have a special guest today, Warren Roberts. Warren, thanks for joining us on Supercharged, the podcast. Thanks for having me. Anxious to uh, introduce you to our listening audience, so give us a quick quick background. All right, so I'm the founder of Living Legacy Forest, and what we do is we transform people's ashes into trees that create profoundly beautiful forests, and as a result of that, we're reforesting uh, Australia and the planet instead of uh, chopping down trees, which are animals' homes, to create coffins and tombstones and graveyards. We're becoming trees and we're reforesting the planet and we're changing the way we live the world as a nation. I had uh, I'd connected with you on LinkedIn. I just thought your story was so unique, you know, such a unique approach to, you know, kind of the whole burial process. So, I mean, it, it's such an interesting idea. So, so let's talk a little bit about the genesis of the idea. How did it come about? Yeah, they, um, look, the idea came to me when my best friend passed away. And I remember at the funeral, someone put their hand on my shoulder and they said, Warren, are you okay? And I said, I was fine. Because at the moment, at the time, I felt like I was fine because I wasn't feeling anything. But I think as a young guy, what I did was I, I, just, um, I just cut off from feeling anything. So I didn't feel the pain. And um, it worked in the short term, but in the long term, I became depressed because if you don't feel anything, you're dead, right? <laughs> and mm. I became numb to the world and, and everything lost. I couldn't feel anything. And, um, and I think for, I was depressed for about seven years and um, I started spending time in nature. And every time I looked at a flower, I started to feel a little bit more alive. So I spent more time in nature and I looked at more flowers and I started to feel more alive. In one year, I spent... I think, like 10, like 10,000 hours in, in the botanic gardens and forests coming back to life again. And in this place of feeling more alive than ever before, um, I finally let myself cry. And it felt good to cry because I wasn't numb anymore. And in that place of feeling more alive than ever before, that's where the idea came to me. And I was like, wow, you know, if people's ashes became trees, then instead of people connecting to what they lost and staying in grief and depression, they could connect to the beauty that that person's life created. And if you connect to the beauty that someone's life created, you feel gratitude and appreciation, you feel alive again, instead of dying inside. And that was, became my life purpose. I was like, I don't, I don't want the consequence of people loving people to result in grief and pain and sadness and depression. It it tears me up. I hate the fact that people love people and that it results in grief. And I don't believe that 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 is the purpose of life. I think the purpose of death and life is that you're supposed to go, you know, like when I lose someone that I love, if their life serves a purpose, which is what we do, their death says, oh my gosh, it reminds me that life is precious, life is finite, that that I will die and I will lose everyone that I love. And in, in respecting that and then going, hang on a second, I'm going to lose everything that I love. I don't take anything for granted. And in doing that, you treat life as precious. And, you know, when, you know, like you turn around and you go, oh, hang on a second, all the people that I love, I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I love you. You know, all the things that if someone dies and you didn't get to say, I love you, or I'm sorry, you've, you've, mucked, you've mucked it up. Yeah. You know, so there's, there's a real opportunity to treat life as precious. And the more you treat life as precious, the more beautiful it is and the more beautiful it becomes, the more you take it for granted, it dies. If you take a relationship for granted, it's dead. Mm. That, that person can be your soulmate. You can love them. You take it for granted, it's dead. If you take a business for granted, it's dead. If you take life for granted, it's dead. It will die in front of your hands. It'll wither in your hands. It will turn to dust. Yeah, that's it. Like if, if we take life for granted, it dies. And the, the purpose of death is to gift us that, that appreciation for being alive. So we don't take it for granted. And that's why we do what we do. 
and that's why we're, we're so driven, you know, and we don't take shortcuts and we do everything properly. So let me, let me ask you, like, if you can go back, like, you know, to maybe your teen years or, you know, early twenties or whatever, I mean, uh, what, what would you, or what was your outlook, I guess, on just the environment or nature or whatever? Was this a, was this just an epiphany that kind of was this post funeral? Yeah, good, really good question. Um, and it's, it's kind of like bifold answer. Like I think when I was really young, maybe 12, I remember the English teacher, she said, oh, you know, um, everyone write a creative poem or something that you're interested in. And um, I wanted to write about the rape of the world because that's what I felt was happening to the world. <laughs> and and um, as I started writing it, I looked around and everyone else in the class was, they were writing about football matches and football games. And I could hear them talking about their football clubs and, and, and I realised that no one else was writing about what I was writing. And I became self-conscious and I was like, shit, I better not write this. This was going to look stupid. Um, and so I stopped writing that and I tried to write about football and it sounded like crap. Point being, I think when I was young, I, I, it was in me and I, and I was really passionate about it and I can't take it away from myself. It's how I am. But Growing up as a late teenager, I, I betrayed myself and in terms of who I was in exchange for who I thought I needed to be, you know, to, to, to please my father and to please my idea of society's idea of a man versus being my own man, you know, and, and honouring myself and honouring my heart. And so that, that was, a, you know, a difficult period, probably from 12 to, to 20. I, I didn't excel at school. I really struggled with, with grades. And, um, yeah, I, I wasn't good at school and I did struggle. But eventually, you know, I, I made my way into university and I, I did a Bachelor of Business in Property. And um, it, it was good because it served to give me a, a great skill set. And ultimately, I couldn't have done what I what I'm doing now if I didn't have that other skill set behind yeah. me. So it's all it's all come together, and I can't complain. So when when you when you kind of went through this difficult period, kind of post you know the funeral, and you know maybe for the next year or so, what was the? I mean, you said you know reconnecting with nature and and just seeing you know coming to life again. So from a business perspective, what was the what was the trajectory? I mean, you had this epiphany and said, hey, let's let's plant trees with people's ashes and, and that type of thing. But I mean, that's that's difficult to uh, to make a living, you know, early yeah. on, I'm assuming. So how did yeah. how did that, you know, the from the start of that, how did that take off? Yeah, well, I guess, you know, I I, I was able to analyze the 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 business opportunity because you know, being a property value, I was able to you know, look at it very objectively and make some reasonable decisions. I could see very quickly that, um, you know, real estate, no, well, cemeteries are the most expensive real estate in the world mm. um, per square metre. I could see that um, we were running out of space. I could see that we were increasing our death rate. I could see that the average city had a cemetery footprint twice the size of its CBD. Wow. So take all the cities in the world, and that's what we've done in 100 years. We've buried the planet with graveyards. And so, you know, we're, we're spending trillions, no, hundreds of billions of dollars a year and we've run out of places to spend it. And I was like, well, I'm a property developer. I know how to, I know how to do this. And um, I, I, can, I can do all the parts to, to buy sites and get planning and all of that. And so I did feasibilities and I worked out that it was um, financially viable as a business plan. Um, I was in a, at, I think at age 30, I was in a very well off position. So I basically just backed myself. And, um, and we, for the first two years, we just hired scientists and, um, first two years was just costs, just mm -hmm. hiring scientists and we killed hundreds of trees. It wasn't working for the first year, you're just spending money and everything's dying. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's no a metaphor. <laughs> yeah. No possibility <laughs> of hope. You know, no, no, yeah. no, no, you don't know if it's going to work. You don't know if it's going to be a success. Everything's dying, spending money, and you you know. But for me, I, I never took my my eyes off the path because I I just knew I I don't want people to love people, and I don't want the consequences of them loving people 
resulting in people being depressed. Mm. I, just, I just don't believe that's the purpose of love and life and being a human on this planet. I don't yep. believe it. I'm not going to leave this this earth I'm not trying to do my best about it. You know, so uh, everything died for two years and it cost me a lot of money. But at the end of the two years, we found a way to make it work. Um, they, you know, human ashes have the same pH as bleach and oven cleaner. Mm -hmm. They weigh three kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, it's 2.2 .2 pounds a kilo. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of pounds, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you just go, it has the same pH as bleach and oven cleaner. Imagine putting like, what, 10 pounds of oven cleaner or bleach in, in a forest. It's, it's not good for it. You, you can put 10 pounds of cigarette butts in a forest, right? And guess what? The cigarette, the forest will survive it, <laughs> you know? But putting 10 pounds of, of, of ashes is just as bad as the cigarette butts. It doesn't help the ecosystem grow. It doesn't become the tree. People are doing it and it's not good for the environment. And out of lack of awareness, they're, they're doing it. Some people are even trying to commercialize it still, which is even worse. But um, it, the reality is it destroys the soil biology, which is the microorganisms that transform matter into molecules like nitrogen and potassium. And that's the circle of life. So, yeah. you know, like it's, it's not cool. Um, but anyway, so we went through that scientific process. We then um, patented that technology. We licensed it to the government. And now we're working with, you know, government authorities and private people all around Australia. We've created eight forests in Australia now. Um, our most recent acquisition is an $80 million forest. Um, it's phenomenal. We're turning a whole golf course into a botanic gardens. Um, it's ridiculous and it's exciting and I get to take something like from the depths of my imagination and bring it into the world and then share it with people through an experience. <laughs> like you can't That's ask insane. for anything more than that. You that know, like, crazy. $80 million. Wow. So yeah. is this only made up of, of trees that were, that were, you know, planted yep. with ash? Wow. Yep. That's and we're turning in incredible. And an entire golf course in, into into a forest made from trees with ash as well. It's like can you still play golf in the in that area, or is it is it like well, converting it from a golf course yeah, to correct. a forest? Okay, we, we'll wind out the golf entirely, and look, one day we might just keep a little bit of mini golf or something to to acknowledge its past life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can almost see that the the you know just the uniqueness of yeah, we're gonna go. There's a golf course and a living legacy forest. You know kind of it intertwined you know together but yeah I, let's let's drill down just a little more just about you know kind of the why behind things I and mean, that that's really what what we want to really get at in this podcast as we as we talk to people and really just hear their stories and um so so from a just from a sustainability standpoint just sustainability in general how would you define that um the industry or the just what does it mean to you like when you hear that word, when you, when you live life, you know, trying to, yeah, okay. you know, according to that right. ethos. Well, sustainability, um, I, I guess, you know, sustainability and ecosystem, the two go hand in hand. Um, my understanding of the word eco means home. And it really is talking about how we take care of our home. Um, and if it's not sustainable, um, we're destroying it. And then it won't be here for our children. And if it is sustainable, we're taking care of it and we'll be here for future generations. Um, in the past, we, we related to the world as if the environment was happening to us. And now what's happening is we're happening to the environment. Right. Consumerism is the most powerful force on the planet. You know, it's it's not, it's, it used to be tidal waves and bushfires and all of those things that were happening to us was the most powerful force on the planet. Now the most powerful force on the planet is us and how we consume. If we drink plastic bottles, boom, in one generation, the ocean's full of plastic. <laughs> we use paper, in one generation, all the, all the forests in the world are gone and all the animals' homes are gone, wiped out just by how we choose. But that means that also that, consumerism it's our superpower as humanity that's our superpower and you know i guess a lot of superheroes when they start out they don't know their powers yeah and they don't know how to use them and we're just waking up to the fact that we are a collective organism and we are learning that we do have power and we're learning how to use it you know there's seven billion people on the planet if if every if 
if 10% of those people became a tree, you'd read for, read for us to Amazon. And you know, all of those people would save half the cost of what they would on a traditional burial and they'd get to create something beautiful and that changed the, our existence on the timeline of humanity, which is no small feat. Mm. You get to actually be remembered for doing something profound and meaningful and you get to actually change, change and create history. So yeah, that's where is, that's our superpower, consumerism. And we're, we're waking up to it and we're starting to change and we're starting to use it and it's exciting. And if we don't, we die. So, I, I mean, you, you don't do anything without, without studying kind of the, like, as you mentioned, like the feasibility, you know, you, you looked yeah. at this from the beginning. So did the erosion crisis, did the deforestation, any of those things come into play as well when you were thinking about this? I mean, I, when I look at, at like even Australia as a whole, I mean, there's so much of it that's kind of this arid, you know, almost desert landscape and whatever I see that you know, this would, and I know that's not true, you know, across the country, but there's so right, much is. of it that is. And you're thinking, you know, how can we have an impact by, you know, planting more trees? And, and I mean, what's, what was kind of your thought process there? There. Yeah, well, it was just this beautiful magnificence. It's like we're solving like multiple problems with, mm. and with one solution, you know, we're, we're solving the cemetery crisis. We're sol solving the affordability that comes from a lack of cemetery space. We're solving deforestation. We're solving loss of animal animal habitat. We're solving, but fundamentally, like, okay, what what would enable a species to destroy its own home like we are doing? How the how is it possible for a species to destroy its own home and ecosystem? Well, I would say it's only possible because we've managed to a have no respect for nature, to separate ourselves and our idea of being separate from it rather than part of it you know and, and indigenous forefathers they didn't see nature as being separate from them and they respected it they treated their trees as their elders yeah so you know we've been desecrating nature in fact we've been desecrating and destroying nature in the name of the sacred <laughs> so and uh, it, it doesn't really work anymore you can't chop down a, a koala's tree in the name of um you know like some something positive um because it's it's just not it doesn't work so um yeah, we, you know, we we can we can turn it all around. You know, we we can solve the cemetery crisis. We can solve the deforestation crisis. We can solve loss of animal habitat. We can create funding for all of this, and that's what we've been doing. We've got a forest in Western Australia. It's forty hectares. Um, it's three years old. We've planted hundreds of trees there, and we've created a twenty hectare. Well, we've re re already reforested twenty hectares of native forest, and an endangered species has come back into existence because of the trees that people planted. So like, it's real. It's not just some wild outlandish idea. Um, yeah, we've really, we've really done it. It's amazing. Now, are these, are these forests ever designed for like creating other things? I mean, do you ever like call, you know, out of these forests or, or is it strictly just, you're, you're just planting them and just letting them go. You're not, you're not going to kind of manage them. You're not going to, cut any wood off of these you know out of these forests or that type of thing what's what's kind of the longer term plan yeah no there's 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 um strict conservation management plans you know we don't just let them go we we manage them in perpetuity um you know if there's disease we have if there's soil disease in the soil we have to manage it if there's disease air disease or um environmental risk we, we manage it we deal right. with it and we, we we maintain it in perpetuity um Otherwise, it wouldn't be sustainable. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right? for sure. So, for sure. You know, we have to be accountable. You mentioned on a on another video I was watching about it's not just the fact that you've planted the tree; it's that this tree will also create seeds. This tree will also, you know, um, provide habitat for. I mean, there's so many other benefits to the to the tree that's not just that single tree. So, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, correct. So, I mean, look, that, that's a big difference is like, you know, people say, well, you know, how do I know I become part of the tree? Well, it's like, um, first of all, the ashes become a nutrient that help the tree grow rather than a toxin that destroys the biology that is supposed to make it grow. And by doing that, the ashes become the tree. You become the tree's thousands of seeds and seedlings that get perpetuated many times beyond that tree's life. Right. So you don't just become a tree and then the tree dies and you're going, oh, that's it. 
you get perpetuated through the circle of life. That is a circle of life. That's what we're re reconnecting to. That's what we're restoring. And that's what we're a part of. That's, that's what it's all about. So Warren, if you're, if you're kind of looking in the eyes of people that are listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube or whatever, and you, you had some advice for them, you know, how, how can they live differently in like in their sphere and in their space and the place that they've, they've landed and, you know, not specifically related to, well, you know, go start your own living legacy for us. Yeah. What are some just general steps that, that people could take tomorrow that to really live differently? Uh, I think the number one thing is that you've got to connect to the thing that brings you to life. If, if you give your time and energy and focus developing skills or businesses or a career and things that make you feel dead inside, the end result of that path is more, more dead inside. And you're not going to have the drive or the passion or the energy or the enthusiasm to, to, to enjoy your journey or to overcome obstacles. You know, when, when you're connected to things that bring you to life, it comes through you into what you're creating. People get excited. They want to be a part of it. And, and, and that's the joy of being alive. So, you know, you've, you've got to don't, don't betray yourself like I did in my early years honor the thing that brings you to life that brings you to tears that you're willing to die for um and and follow that path and it'll take you it'll open doors that didn't exist and, and couldn't have opened otherwise and it'll introduce you to people in in random ways um and it's a it's a path to having you know uh, an enriching life experience so if you don't do that you're dead <laughs> so so you mentioned earlier, you know, you take anything for granted and it dies. I mean, that that is that's just a, that's a gold nugget that, you know, was was that you mentioned earlier in the podcast. And it, you kind of wrapped us up today with that same thing. I was like, you've almost come full circle, even in the interview, you know, about ways that, uh, you know, how you can yeah. come to <laughs> life through choices that are made. Are there any, if, if people want to learn more about like deforestation, they want to learn more about, you know, soil conservation, those types of things that, that you really, you know, you care about because it's part of, of kind of your, even your business plan, what you're trying to do and the changes you're trying to make. What are some resources that might be good for them to look at? Where would I start? Um, to learn about sustainability? Just, yeah, I didn't, and maybe for, even, even with reforestation or anything like that. Reforestation. Yeah. Well, I mean, st start with learning a about, to, to me, like there's, there's, there's so much magic in nature and, you know, like you learn about soil biology and microorganisms and it's like, wow, there's a whole universe in there. Um, and, you know, but if you love flowers, if you love trees, wh wherever your passion is, there's just so much information in, you know, like if you, if you love flowers and you start learning and researching about the millions of flowers that exist on this planet, you're going to have a good time right you're not gonna have a you're gonna have a great time looking at flowers smelling flowers learning about them um growing them you know like if you if you love microorganisms and glow worlds there's just so much adventure and journey for it to take you on follow that path um give energy to, to what you love and it and it will it will give you a lot of fruit back um other in, other advice with, with following your heart and following your path of the challenge is you're, you're your greatest obstacle on that path and you will sabotage that path time and time again. Every time you go to get, give yourself what you truly want in this life, you will try to sabotage it and you will, at the start, you'll blame other people and as you mature, you'll start seeing that it's your, your own patterns and you're doing it again and again. Um, and it's really important that you, you, you develop some awareness of your own patterns and your, how you sabotage yourself um, so that you don't stop fighting invisible enemies in the outer world yeah. and you, yeah. and you start just reconciling your, your own um, limitations, you know? So for, for me, it was guys like Joseph Campbell um, and Carl Jung provided some great insight into learning about my operating system as a human um, and, and understanding how I functioned so I could, um, so I could make myself function more efficiently <laughs> so you can and learn about yeah. walking your own hero's journey as uh as Joseph Campbell was, would talk about but so as we yeah. close out today give us give us one uh one thing that we haven't touched on today you'd like to close us out and then maybe the best place to find you online if people want to want to learn more 
Yeah, look, um, just jump on Living Legacy Forest on our Facebook page. You'll see me doing Facebook updates at all of our new forests and openings and launches and stuff there. Uh, and if you jump on our website, livinglegacyforest.com, you'll get to see a, a bunch of videos about what we're doing, interviews with the press and stuff like that. And I'd love for more people to come along our journey. Um, we will be coming across to the US sometime next year. Um, we're going to be doing it in a radically different way than we've ever done before over there. So I can't wait to, um, to plant some seeds there. Well, 320 million of my countrymen say, come on over and uh, we'll do everything we can to help you with, uh, with, your, with your business plan and, and just with your why. I mean, just the, the whole passion behind you know, the movement that you, you wanted to start through Living Legacy Forest. And Warren, we just want to thank you for taking time today and just sharing your story and sharing your passion behind, the, behind you know, everything that drives you and just telling your story in the broader story of just living a better way. Warren, have a great day. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I really appreciate you having me here.